The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, You want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the weeds along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. Gospel of the Lord. Praise Well, last week, you may recall, we had the gospel about the sower and the seeds, and today we have the wheat and the weeds. And what's noteworthy in today's story that Jesus shares with us is that the wheat and the weeds were often very hard to tell apart. Uh, back in that time and place in the Bible, the farmers were well aware of a weed that has come to be known as fool's wheat. And it looked like wheat as it grew, but it really wasn't wheat. And thus farmers back then knew not to pull up anything till harvest time because if they tried to pull up the weeds beforehand, it might uproot the good stuff as well. So just leave it alone until it's ready. Now, obviously, the wheat and weeds here symbolize good and evil. I think that's pretty clear. The wheat represent those who obey God and follow his commandments, who do good and enrich other people's lives, bear fruit, so to speak. And the weeds are those who don't do that mainly living for themselves instead of for God. Now, if we wanted to simplify today's two main gospel lessons, the first one may be obvious. Don't be a weed, right? The second lesson is this. Don't go around judging other people as weeds, with hurtful words and actions and attitudes towards them as if they're no good. We should remember that there's some wheat and weeds in each and every one of us. We've all done good things that we can be proud of, but we've also done simple things that we're not so proud of, hurting other people and ourselves. There's a difference, though, between weeding out bad behavior and treating people as weeds themselves. You parents know that you have to discipline your kids at times in order to teach them important lessons about proper behavior, especially doing what Jesus asks. And certainly love calls for that kind of discipline from time to time. And sometimes police officers or government officials or church authority have to discipline people under their care for similar reasons. Now that doesn't mean, though, we automatically think of such people who have done wrongs as weeds. Let's make that clear. Despite what some may think, everybody's got the potential to change for the better, no matter what they've done or who they are, because God made each of us out of love. And he always holds out hope that we will change for the better. Unfortunately, there's a lot of wheat and weed labeling that goes on in our society in many ways today. We may not use those exact words to describe people, but certainly our positive or negative attitudes that we show to them can be good indicators as to which way we label them. You know, people can quickly label others either on their own or what they hear in the news or through social media or what others share through gossip. And then we may suddenly act as if we know everything there is to know about certain people when in reality there's so much more that we don't know about these people. For example, many people would probably be very quick to label murderers, rapists, and drug pushers as weeds to be plucked out of society. Those who are in jail are often quickly judged to have little, if any, worth in society. So just put them away, get them out of sight. However, do you think for one minute 
that God ever stopped loving any of these people? No way. God always cares about them, even though God is not always pleased with what we do. Obviously, the labeling goes beyond jail cells and certainly takes place in our streets and in our homes. With many people writing off other people who may be of a different race or a different religion or having a different political view than we do or look or act differently from the way we wish they would be. When does all this labeling end? You need to ask that question. Jesus came to make us aware of these kinds of problems that were created in the world. Telling us that writing people off or labeling them like that as one negative thing or another is a very dangerous game to play that can have eternal consequences. Who has the right to decide who is wheat and who is a weed? You know, the only one who can see the total picture inside and out of each and every person's life, of all the good and bad mixed in, is who? God. God. And even if we think we know a person really well, and we think we have evidence for or against a person, there will always be aspects of each person's life that we'll never know about. Thus, the final judgment on who's a weed and who's wheat is not ours to pass, but God alone. You know, several years ago, a magazine story featured a retired lay missionary and his wife who spent many years in a foreign country doing religious charity work. And they retired to a small farm in the U.S. outside of a small town, and they were growing vegetables and raising some chickens. And they sold much of it to the people in that nearby town. After a while, though, townspeople grumbled against this couple, calling them greedy and misers and possessive with their goods and money due to the higher prices they charge and nitpicking about the weight of the vegetables and their goods. And bitterness actually grew towards this couple. As time went on, the missionary's wife died, and only then did the townspeople discover the truth. That every cent of this couple's earnings from egg and vegetable sales went to support two elderly widows who had no other source of income. They were taking care of the poor, the neediest among us. This true story illustrates that we would do much better investing our time and energy looking for the good in other people and offering the good that we have instead of spending unfruitful time holding grudges, spreading rumors, writing people off one way or another. And you know, that may be very hard to resist that urge, especially when somebody has hurt us deeply. And yet, no matter how much pain somebody may have caused us, there's always hope and peace to be found when we look to Jesus for guidance and strength through it. One only has to look at the real-life story of St. Maria Goretti to realize that. The church around the world just celebrated her memorial back on July 6th. That was the date of her death back in 1902. She's one of my favorite saints. Here was a beautiful, faithful, vibrant, 11-year-old Italian girl who was stabbed 14 times by an 18-year-old neighbor named Alessandro. Maria chose to be stabbed to death rather than be raped by him. And on her deathbed, she forgave him with all her heart for what he had done, and hoped that he might someday share heaven with her. Alessandro was sentenced to 30 years in prison, showing no remorse for what he had did for many years. And then one night he had a dream. And in that dream, Maria Goretti came to him offering flowers. That dream transformed his life completely. And he had a major conversion. And after 27 years of his sentence, Alessandro became a free man. Guess what? The first thing he did with his freedom. He went to see her mother to ask and beg for forgiveness. And she freely gave it to him. And that brought healing and peace to both Alessandro and the mother. <coughs> That begs the question for us, if he can be forgiven by both victim and family for such a horrible crime, then how can we not forgive others for much lesser offenses? It's worth noting that Alessandro became a monk, living as a gardener and a receptionist at a monastery until he died peacefully at the age of 87 in 1970. 
Alessandro even attended the canonization of the girl he murdered. And Maria's mom and brothers and sisters were all present for that canonization too. Among the largest crowd ever assembled in Rome for a canonization service up to that time in the church's long history. You know, it could have been very easy to consider Alessandro a weed early on for what he did. But as his later life clearly demonstrated, there was still beautiful weed to be found in his heart. It just took time to find it. Through the hope and mercy of Jesus Christ himself, he may very well be in heaven with this little girl whom he stabbed 14 times. Yes, there is wheat and weeds to be found in all of us. And Jesus says, just let them grow together and God will separate them in harvest time, which is a sign of judgment day for all of us. May we do all that we can to keep our lives clear of the weeds of sin, which is basically disobeying God and what he asks. And look for the weak in other people. How do we do that? We encourage them. We show them love. We show them a great deal of patience. And we forgive them for their failures. Trust in Jesus Christ. And always strive to follow his commandments in the hope that someday we may be looked upon as weak worthy, being brought into that eternal barn that we call heaven.